Greetings, grace and peace, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Reverend Dr. Ecclesiastes Goodwin, President of the East Mississippi Baptist State Convention, Incorporated. Please allow me this opportunity to share with you our upcoming 128th annual session. That's right, our 128th annual session of the East Mississippi Baptist State Convention, Incorporated. We will gather at the Scott County District Baptist Association building Monday, October 24th through Thursday, October 27th. On Monday, October 24th, registration will begin at 6 p.m. The evening worship musical will begin at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss this musical at we invoke the presence, the power, and the spirit of God. 7 p.m. Monday, October 24th. Then Tuesday through Thursday, October 25th through October 27th, we will gather at 4 o'clock p.m. each day to indulge, to engage, and to facilitate plenary sessions. God has something just for you. Also during this time, our ministry and auxiliary directors will be presenting their addresses on Tuesday, our labor's director, on Wednesday, our woman's auxiliary director, and on Thursday, the convention president will give his address. Please come share with us as we engage to envision the future exceptionally by adhering to the mandate of the church. God has something just for you. Come be our guest during the 128th annual session of the East Mississippi Baptist State Convention. Remember, there is a word from the Lord.
coming from Brother Harris and our prayer from Brother Patrick. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless all of you. Amen. Scripture tonight comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. Verses 5 and 6. It says, you trust in the Lord yeah, yeah, yeah. with all of thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Bow your head in humble heart. Let us pray. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. If thou would call thyself for us, Lord, where shall we go? Father, we stand in our need of need of prayer. Lord, before we ask for anything, we just want to give you glory. Thank you that you're God all by yourself. Thank you that you're omnipotent. Thank you that you're omniscient. Thank you that you're omnipresent. Thank you that you're love. Lord, we just thank you for your divine grace. And your mercy that you bestowed upon us this day. Lord, you give us your mercy even though we don't deserve it. Those who say you look beyond our thoughts. Just to address every one of our needs. Thank you for your son Jesus. Who came and gave himself as a ransom for our sins. And thank you for the pressure we want to go. Because Jesus gave us as another comforter to help us on life journey. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this day that you've been with us. You walk with us. You talk with us. You guided us. You corrected us. You convicted us. You comforted us. Thank you, Lord. For who you are. I want to thank you for blessing this convention. Thank you for our awesome president, Lord, and all of the officers, of Lord, who do all they can do to make this commission be what it is. Lord, we thank you for blessing those who are sick among our convention members. Bless those, Lord, who are right now who are having hip challenges, those who have the mental challenges, those who have the financial challenges, even those who have the frustration challenges. Bless them right now, Lord. Lord, we ask you to just bless us now as we come together once again. Your blessings in our service tonight as we glorify you. We'll be edified. Lord, we'll be inspired. Lord, we'll be encouraged. Lord, in this service. Lord, we're just thanking you for all that you do. We love you because you're first love of yours. This is your servant of prayer. We pray, thank you, thank you, believe it. Ask it all in the Son of Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
to introduce our, our speaker for our devotional message. Amen. Let every heart say amen. amen. Come on, let us say amen again. Amen. If you love the Lord, put your hands together and make some noise in here on tonight. Amen. See, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. And to all of our convention officials and staff, to the moderator, Bill and his staff, and to all it takes to make up uh, this assembly. Amen. To our presider for tonight, amen. Vice President uh, Max Swain, and to all of you, my father's children. Uh, I'm grateful to have this uh, audacious task of introducing our devotional messenger. Uh, for tonight, uh, Dr. McSwain is presiding, but I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to present to him, present him to you all, because I have not had the opportunity uh, to present him in his official uh, new role. Um, at our Midwinter Board meeting in February, our former General Secretary, uh, due to uh, circumstances beyond his control, expressed to us that he would no longer be able uh, to serve as our General Secretary in the person of Reverend Marvin Miles. Uh, and at that time, I went into prayer that God would send us what we needed. I may know God answered prayer. Amen. Amen. God is a prayer hearing and prayer answering God. Amen. And God did just what I needed him to do. He answered my prayers. Amen. I believe he sent us a dynamic, prolific, and powerful person of a general secretary in the person of Reverend Dr. Marquis Lewis. If you have looked at your email lately, you probably have gotten over 5,000 emails from him. Uh, you look at Facebook every amen. It seems like every hour he's making Facebook posts about East Mississippi. Amen. In the short time that he answered the call uh, to serve as our general secretary, he has taken uh, our convention through his role to another level. Amen. He has assisted. He has served. Amen. I'm grateful for the ministry that he has provided to make amen our workload easier. Uh, to make this convention the best, amen, that we know it is, amen? amen? Amen. So I'm grateful, amen, to officially tonight be able to introduce to you, East Mississippi, amen, our new Executive General Secretary, our devotional messenger for tonight, uh, in the person of Reverend Dr. Marquis Lewis. He's the proud pastor of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church of Law, Mississippi, uh, my friend, my brother, amen, your new General Secretary, Reverend Dr. Marquis Lewis. Can y'all help me celebrate him tonight? Amen. I'm going to ask that uh, our music out here to just give us a brief, amen, just a snippet of a song, amen. And after they have come and blessed us, amen, the next voice she will hear be that of our General Secretary for the devotional message on tonight, Reverend Dr. Marquis Lewis. Amen.
y'all can hear me right here. Y'all looking at me kind of strange. Oh, how I love Just take a moment tonight and tell somebody it's good 
together just to be here. Amen. Because I, I know I can testify tonight, Brother President, amen, that I have some experiences in my life where, amen, I had more bills than I had money. Amen. My money wasn't as long as the month, but somehow or another, the Lord made a way and provided every one of my needs. He continued to be Jehovah Jireh. And for that, I just got to take some time and let somebody know that it's good to be here. Amen. David tells us here in the text, he said that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. Now that word glad means to cause to rejoice. Uh, several things in the Old Testament were said to bring gladness to the hearts of men. But most importantly, my brothers and sisters, the Lord and his salvation ought to be the primary reason for our gladness. Now, when you come to understand that you have been saved by grace, your sins have been forgiven, and you have been adopted into the family of God, my friends, I want you to know that that's a good reason for you to be glad. But in these verses, David tells us that he has found a reason for gladness in coming into the house of the Lord. Now, I know. I know tonight, East Mississippi, that not everybody shares the same emotion when it comes to coming to the house of the Lord. Because if they did, we would have seats in the house. This house would be packed every time that the doors of the church are open. But you know what has happened? We have allowed this pandemic to become our excuse. We have allowed the pandemic to hinder us from coming to the house of worship. And many of us tonight, my brothers and sisters, I wasn't there, but they told me about it. And we have become like the old water pumps at the old water wheels. I wasn't there, but they told me how they used to use it. They had to pump and prime the old well in order to get water into the house. And that's what has happened to many so-called church folk when it comes to coming to the house of the Lord. You want somebody to pump and prime you in order to get you into the house of wisdom. But I stopped by to tell you tonight, it should take pumping and priming to get you in the house of the Lord. All you ought to do is think on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. And your soul ought to cry out, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You've done so much for me. When you think about what Jesus did for you, your hands ought to go up, your feet ought to get light. You ought to be ready to testify and tell somebody it's good just to be here. My friends, you see, David found overwhelming joy in coming to the house of the Lord. And the same thing ought to be true for us today. So I want to talk to you for just a few moments, and I promise I'll be out your way, and give you just a few reasons why it's good just to be here. Well, first of all, the text lets us know, my friends, that there is a purpose in coming to the house of worship. David mentions two primary purposes for going to worship. First of all, we come here to hear God's precepts. Or in other words, my friends, we come to the house of worship, Dr. Jones, to hear a word from the Lord. Every time we come in this house, you ought to raise the same question that was raised to the prophet Jeremiah. Is there any word from the Lord? In verse number four, David speaks of the testimony of Israel. You see, this is a reference of God's command to Israel to gather at the temple and later in the tabernacle for three great Jewish feasts. That is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of the Tabernacles. But you see, the Jews made their pilgrimage to the place of worship because doing so honored the word of God. One of the primary reasons we come together, my brothers and sisters, in this place of worship is to hear and to heed to the word of God. I want to tell you tonight, East Mississippi, that the Bible should be at the heart of everything that we do. 
Every event that we hold, it should and it must be centered around the Word of God. Every service that has been given to us is a God-given opportunity to open our Bibles and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For you see, spirit-filled Bible center preaching will thrill the hearts of the saints of God. And when you hear the great things and doctrine of the Bible, my friends, it ought to stir your soul. But you want to know what has happened to us, Mr. President? Amen. We have gotten hip to having so many gospel singers. Oh, no. We sit in here for six, seven hours for a gospel singing. But let Mr. President or Dr. Lewis or Dr. Jones go over 30 minutes of preaching. We'll throw that one Baptist speaker up and walk out the side door so we can get to what we got to get to. So we can go where we got to go. So we can go catch the Patriots. So we can go catch the Lakers. But we don't want to take time out to hear what does say the Lord. Amen, my friends. Not only that tonight, my brothers and sisters, amen, the text also lets us know about the people who gather in the temple. Uh, while David found gladness in the purpose of going to the house of God, he also found gladness in who he met when he got there. Amen. He gives us another reason for being glad about going to church. David was glad to go to church because he knew he would meet the people of the Lord there. He tells us something about the people that he would meet at church. For you see, they were a people united in fellowship because the text says, they said, let us go. The Jews saw their time at the tabernacle at a time when they could come together on common grounds for a common purpose. Petty disputes and family disagreements were put aside so that they could worship the Lord together. Amen, my friends. We can learn a lot from these ancient worshipers. You see, I look around the church and I realize tonight that we are all different. We come from different families, different backgrounds, but yet, my friends, we have all been commanded by the Lord in Hebrews 10 and 25 to fail not to assemble ourselves together. If we are going to do this, then there are characteristics that must be true. My friends, we must learn to practice love. Amen, I found out, Dr. McClain, that love in the church is almost like Elvis. It has left the building. We must demonstrate forgiveness. We must live in tolerance. And we must offer restoration. As long as we allow these petty differences, hard feelings, and that I'm right, and your wrong mentality to rule our lives, we will never have the kind of worship experience and we will never be glad to go to church. But there are also a people united by family. Because David says, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For you see, the ancient Jews were a people connected by blood. In other words, they were family. When they came together for worship, my friends, it was a family affair. And that uh, should be the same way for you and I tonight when the church comes together, we should take advantage of the opportunities to strengthen our family bonds. That's one reason we have so many worship opportunities to come together and fellowship because it helps build a healthy family spirit in the church. But lastly, tonight, and I'm out of here, y'all, there is the person that they glorified death. Four times in the text, David mentions the word Lord. He was at the heart of all that they did. Every moment and every event of life revives around the Lord and his worship. For you see, he was the centerpiece of everything that they did. When David calls God Lord, he is using the most common name 
for God in the Bible. The word used here is Yahweh or Jehovah. This name for God appears over 6,800 times in the Old Testament. It identifies God as the eternal self-existing one. It reminds us tonight that he has no beginnings and he has no ends. Amen. This name also identifies God as the covenant keeping one. He is the God who keeps every promise that he makes. I tell them down at friendship that, amen, if you can find one promise that the Lord didn't keep, show it to me and make a believer out of me because every promise that he made, the Lord has kept it on my behalf. Amen. He keeps every soul that he saves. For you see, his name identifies him as the God who is worthy of all our worship. But finally, amen, he is the reason that we come to church. For my friends, if it were not for the Lord, I don't know where I'd be right now. But oh Lord, I'm thankful tonight that he saved me and he's keeping me and he's blessing me. And for that tonight, I want to pray the Lord. I want to serve him and worship him and get together with other folks that want to worship him as well. I want to tell you tonight, East Mississippi, if you come here just because it's annual session time, then you are here for the wrong reason. If you come here to be seen or be seen by somebody, then you come here for the wrong reason. If you came here because you got something to do on the program, you are here for the wrong reason. But can I tell you why I'm here tonight? Because I love the Lord I'm here Because he saved my soul I'm here Because he's been good And for that tonight I've got to tell him Thank you Lord Thank you For bringing me out Thank you For saving my soul Thank you For the ways you made Is there anybody in the house tonight that got to thank you in your spirit? You've been mighty good to me. I can't tell it all. You came to see and not see who brought me out. But can I tell you, he's in Mississippi, but I thank him for the most this On a hill called Harry You know what they did, don't you? They took my Lord And laid him out On an old rugged cross They nails In his hands And they riveted His feet I like to set them Down in Lord Mississippi They were doing alright While they hanging him on the ground But thank God tonight they lifted it up. He said, Can you fight? Can you fight? He lifted it up. From the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Is there anybody in the house today? Thank God for the hill of Harry. For it was on a hill far away. Stood it on. The emblem of suffering and shame. How I love 
We're going to march in from the foyer. Yeah, the procession of them. Well, just the, some sound music in a few minutes. So long. Um, and then follow. We want the convention staff. We want district and local presidents, officers of the Mormons Auxiliary District, uh, followed by Sister McDougal, family, friends, and church members. Son, Ash McDougal, daughter Kyle McDougal, 
The matron um, president, we have introduction, Brother Ash McDougall, solo, Mrs. Ariane Keaton. You'll come in that order. Now I'm going to say amen. Yeah. Say amen again. Amen. You found your way back in the house of the Lord. Once again, give yourselves a hand clap. You know why I'm going to give yourselves a hand clap? Because you trusted in God who brought you a mighty, mighty long way. If it had not been for God and all of his mercy, grace, and strength, amen, amen. We just thankful on this evening to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. All my hearts may bow heads for a word of prayer. Father God, we come this evening, God, to say thank you. Thank you, God, for bringing us thus far, God. God, through all the many toils and, and tears and all the many heartaches and pain, God, all the many trip-ups, step-overs, all the many push-downs and push-overs, God, all the many fall-downs and fall-overs, God, you picked us up, God, and put us back on solid ground. And for that, we say thank you. God, through all the things that this world placed in front of us, God, we glad we have you walking with us, have you beside us, pushing us along the way, God. If it had not been for you, God, I just, I don't even want to know where I would be, God. I'm just glad you have me where I am. God, I just need you right now, God. We need you right now to come into this place, Heavenly Father, God. Touch each and every heart, God, right now, God, with a, with a seal of protection, God, a seal of love, God, and a seal, God, letting everyone know that you are God. God, we just thank you right now. Thank you, God. We just need you to come into this place. God, lift up every heart, God, that we may lift you up, God, from where our help comes from. We just thank you right now. In the name of Son, Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. Amen. President, Sister Jacqueline McDougall, host moderator, 
Reverend Charles Bell and his staff, Congress President Carlos Wilson and his staff, Presiding Officer Sister Dorothy Fluker, and all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings and humble salutations. Welcome. I am Latoria Davis White, the Scott County District Matrix uh, President, and we would like to welcome you here tonight. We consider ourselves blessed to have you in our midst. We thank you for coming, and we hope that you have enjoyed your stay thus far. Through living by faith, we are still striving and trusting in God's command to keep us afloat. We pray that your stay thus far has been enjoyable, and we do ask that you visit Scott County District whenever you see necessary. We pray that God's favor will continue to bless you, and again, welcome. President Goodwin, other distinguished guests, I'm here to introduce your speaker. I would not delay the message uh, by uh, standing here and telling you all of her accolades. Um, you know who she is. You definitely know what to expect. She's a mother, a grandmother, an aunt, and a diligently serving woman of God. I bring to you none other than your woman that built her president, my mother, Sister Jacqueline.
I was uh, in the past, I was in the public control manager. But I was also a plant auditor. They would greet me with a smile when I got to the door. <laughs> <laughs> but after I would check their work, they all would push me out of the door. <laughs>
Bless those who have traveled along the highways and byways to get here. And Father, that you will see them safe at home. And Father, whatever you see in need of your servant. Lord, tonight we just ask that you would rain your blessings around this message and be what you would have it to be and not me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My stewardship. I like what Brother Dog said. I went, but I plan to go again. <laughs> but I have recognized, uh, I have represented East Mississippi National Baptist, uh, East Mississippi in the National Baptist Convention. I have represented them in the state. I represented them in the district. And you can find the rest of the information on your handout. But I'd like to mention one thing that we have done as a woman's auxiliary. Sister Watson brought it up. We have been blessed by what you have done for us. Through you and your donation, we were able to supply hygiene equipment and little, little donation to the Wesley House, to the Carol Large, and to United Way. We collected over 500 packages. Why don't you give yourself a hand? <laughs> and the thing that I like about it is they're still coming in. Right. So we have supplies that we can still help someone else. And we're not a selfish group. If you haven't donated, we're still waiting. <laughs> my introduction. I'd like to thank my youngest son for that beautiful introduction. What your mom just put on you, you remember I just put your name on the program? <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Being a military person, you should have already been prepared. <laughs> I like I like to thank my pastor. I told him this morning that I put him on the program. And my oldest son for the prayers. Thank you for the computer repair that you had to do. Whenever I would hit one little key, I would go somewhere else. I thank God for this new generation. Thank you, my niece. She was wondering, what should I say? You said the right thing. Thank you, Eric, for that beautiful, beautiful song. It was just too short. I'd like to thank my family and my church and the district for your support and my husband for being here. And thank you for what you have done. Now, my message. Brother Lewis, if you had let me, I would have borrowed what you had already said. <laughs> I'd like to use for a theme tonight. There is hope at the end of the road. All right. All right. The Lord is my rock, my fortress. And my Savior, my God is my rock, and whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. You know, there are days when I open my eyes, and I wish I had awakened to a simpler world. There is the pandemic, there is politics. There's gender issues, there's racial injustice, there's loss of grief, losses, there's grief, there's violence, and senseless hate, senseless killing, which crowds us every day. There's even times I don't even want to turn on the news. Do you know what I'm talking about? There is none among us who does not at some personal intimate level 
long for the reality of peace. I will remind you that the absence of war and conflict do not constitute the presence of peace. Peace, real peace, is an internal phenomenon. Peace, real peace, it will enable you to sleep when the wind is blowing. Peace, real peace, it will let you see yourself standing when all around you is slow. Everyone, at an intimate and personal level, longs for peace. Life and ministry, they are weary and difficult. I know you ministers have a time dealing with church folks like me. We are pushed to shift and change at a constant rate. Pouring into our output, our influence, we're vivid. But they say that drastic times call for drastic measures. Do not grow weary in doing good. There is an old hymn that says that they would know we are Christians by our love. But simply saying we still wear down. Weariness will creep into my soul no matter how hard I try to keep it up. But Jesus said it. That all the law and prophets hangs on two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. It sounds so simple and it feels so impossible sometimes. We have some people that just hard to love. But Lord, you need to keep working on me. As I stare at the dark and the difficult days in the in face, I know I must grow to look and be more like God. The world doesn't need more opinions. They don't need more efforts or fever attempts as a human help. It needs Jesus. When you try to do good, evil press on everything. But I can tell you from my own experience that the problem of life can sometimes come upon us before we can get one thing straight. We are bombarded with another. But if I want to incarnate God in the world, I must allow him to mold me, shape me through such attributes as faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, friendship, and love. When we are at the end of our strength, the end of our road, God offers us strength. Isaiah says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know, waiting and hoping, it seems like a funny combination to me. And then the good news throws in the idea of trusting. But the more I thought about these things, the more sense that it made. But our God is steadfast. Yeah. It is the very definition of who he claimed to be. Yeah. It is because he is unwavering, uh -huh. he's unrelenting, uh -huh. that we can trust him. He promises never to leave us or uh -huh. forsake us. He does not change like shifting shadows. He is a solid rock beneath our feet. But let me see if we can just make it make sense to you. Ladies, I know you like to order. But how frequently do you order online? You know, it's convenient, isn't it? We can shop. 
at art hours. We can do comparison shopping. We can find things that might be difficult to find. And you know the other thing that I like about ordering online is that it means that we get fun things in the mail. <laughs> we are never quite sure when it's going to come. Sometimes they promise a certain delivery date. Sometimes you can actually track your package online and pretty much know what day it will arrive. <coughs> but there's this wonderful anticipation. I don't know when it's coming, but I know for sure that it's on the yeah. You know what that is? It's hope. It's trust. And it's waiting all rolled up into one. I'm waiting in hope because I believe that my order will come. We often equate hope with wishful thinking, but my hope is not wishful thinking. It is quite reasonable. By placing an order with a replica company, I have every reason to think that I will receive what I'm hoping for. I will receive what I'm waiting for. So even if it takes longer than I like to wait, I still wait. I still hope, I still trust, all rolled up into one. You know, Paul is writing to the church in Rome because the church at this time had become discouraged. They are discouraged because it seems like God is taking too long to do what God said he would do. It's not that they doubted God. It's not that they stopped believing God, but it seems like at the time they needed God to speed things up. Is there anybody in the room tonight? It's not that you're living in doubt. It's not that you're disbelieving, but you want God to speed things up. I mean, you pray and you fast and you wanted God to move Right now. Right. How many of you know that God may not be there when you want it? Oh, now I know. Oh, 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 oh. Paul has encouraging words for them and for us today. Even before Jesse Jackson coined that phrase, keep hope alive. Yes. Paul wrote to Ted, don't lose your hope. If we gave a working definition of hope so that we would be on the same page, you see, hope is the expectation of good. In other words, it's not good right now. The situation is not good right now, but I expect it to get better. Is there anybody in here with the expectation yeah. that the situation yeah. with the situation yeah. it's not good now but I expect it to get good anybody expect it to get good hope says things are going to get better hope says God's got a plan and he's working it out for you. Hope says, if you 
You know how those sisters are. They never failed to remind him that her nursery was full and Harris was empty. She provoked and she teased him so grievously that her appetite became as bare as her womb. Hannah Hart was sad. She wept bitterly. She was deeply distressed. But Hannah had no children. Year after year, Hannah prayed. No doubt as she did every day that the Lord would hear her prayers, open her womb, and give her a child. But still, had no children. How oh. did what we often find ourselves doing in our deep distress and our deep despair. How to pour out her soul before the Lord. Yeah. She vowed a vow. Yeah. Oh Lord of hosts, yes. if you would indeed look on the affliction of your servant oh, yeah. and remember me yeah. and not forget your servant. Yeah. Yeah. But to give to your servant a son, then I give him to the Lord yes. all the days of his life. Yes. And no razor shall touch his head. Yes. When we first met Hannah, we found her waiting. We found her wondering, and we found her praying. Yes. No doubt she asked the same questions that we all do when we wait on the Lord. Yes. Lord, why? Lord, how long? When all seems hopeless and lost, God is doing his great and gracious work. Often hidden from our eyes. The story of Hannah begins in heartache, but it ends in hope. It is a story full of Hannah's great pain, but also the Lord's greatest promise. The Lord remembered him. The Lord opened her womb. The Lord gave Hannah a child, yes. a son named Samuel, yes. a son who would anoint King David yes. and foretell the coming of a greater king, yes. who would be David's son, yes. a son whose very name reminded him yes. as he reminded us that the Lord heard her. Yes. Hannah's story is a story about the unexpected. The unimaginable, yeah. the unbelievable yeah. the grace of God yeah. against all odds, when all seem hopeless and lost. Yeah. God is doing His great yeah. and His gracious work. Yeah. All the hidden from our eyes. Yeah. God joins us in our weakness. Yeah. God comes in the midst of our weakness. Yeah. God comes in the midst of our wonder. And he'll come in the midst of our fight. Yeah. God may not ask our prayers the same way he answered him, but the same Lord that remember him, they yeah. are so remember you. Yeah. I believe Hannah will tell you why he takes his time. Because he knew that I would come up against some stuff. Yeah. That if he not had not prepared me for, it would overwhelm me and I'm selling. Some of the things that a lesser master architect put me together, I wouldn't be able to withstand. He had to work on me a little longer than he did some other people. Because he knew that the storm that was coming my way was going to ease up on me until it had tried me at every point. But he built me to handle the storm. And he knew that time would test me. But it matters not how you look today. Time's going to tell if you are as strong as you look. There's a whole lot of people who look good and they act strong. But the truth is that they are not built on a good foundation. They may not stand for a while, but soon time's gonna test them. This is why people that looks like a pillar of strength today may not be here next month, 
Because the only thing that's rooted in the rock is going to be able to stand. Uh -huh. But I was built to handle the storm. Uh -huh. But in spite of the issues that came my way, I knew that I had enough in me to withstand it all. When you know that it's beyond a reason of doubt, you have what you need inside of you. There's a certain confidence that'll calm your nerves, which is why you don't have to panic. You don't have to get hysterical because you know that you are prepared. Proverbs 10 and 25 says that when the storm is past, the weakness are no more. But I need to tell somebody here tonight, and I'm going to get out of your way, that when it comes to laying the foundation of life, I want you to know it's hard work. Anybody can shout. Anybody can dance. Anybody can run. Anybody can, can, can holler when you're doing good. When you dig it and hit it rocks and roots yeah. and get it things out of the way that are unstable, yeah. undependable, yeah. shifting and loose in your life. It's easy to say thank you, Jesus, yeah. when you don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. It's easy to walk around with a smile on your face when you don't have to another doctor's apartment. Yeah. It's easy to lay down and go to sleep at night yeah. when all the bills are caught up. Yeah. But what about when the stumbling blocks get in your way? Yeah. What about when you have no tests done at the doctor's office? Yeah. What about when the bills are near and you don't know where the money's coming from? The wise man digs down deep. And I think I ought to tell you that if you're going to build on a solid rock, you got to dig deep. Yeah. You got to dig huh, past feelings, past emotions. You got to dig past what folks say about you. You got to dig has been so holy yeah. that you forgot about salvation. Yeah. You got to be yeah. past your education yeah. and how many degrees you got. Yeah. You got to be yeah. past other folks' testimony yeah. and get to know him for yourself. Yeah. But Jesus is telling us yeah. that if the house has the right foundation, yeah. it will still be standing. No matter what kind of storm, yeah. the storm is over. I don't know about you, but I've had my share of storms. But I'm still standing. I know somebody here feels the same way. You may see me standing here tonight, and it looks like I got it all together. But that don't mean I ain't ever been through some storms. Yeah. You may hear me speaking words of encouragement and blessings, lifting you up, but that don't mean I ain't never been down. I don't have time to talk about these storms I've been through in my life. There are some storms that I could have avoided. There are storms that I could But the message I want to get to you tonight is that I'm still standing. Right. I took a vision, but I'm still standing. It was a bad storm, but I'm still standing. Yeah. It feels some stuff all around me, but I'm still standing. Yeah. It blew some people away that I thought were my friends, yeah. but I'm still standing. Yeah. Somebody here may ask 
It has the notion and sentence that we receive our president's address. And it has the notion and sentence that we, we receive our president's address and that it continues and be placed uh, in the East Mississippi Baptist State Convention archives. All those in favor, use the vote of time. Aye. Opposes. Eyes have and emotions been carried. Okay. At this time, I believe we are ready for the love offering. And we are asking, and I'm asking the usher, uh, if if you don't have an envelope for your love offering, the ushers have uh, envelopes for the love offering. Okay, and uh, we are asking for each member, each person, to bless our president with one hundred dollars. Y'all, come on, give it up for our president. Give it up for. Us. Come on, bring the love offering. Uh, you, we know. We know that it's a blessing to receive, but God said it's a greater blessing to give. So let's just give. So. Amen. Let us all say amen. 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 We're going to ask the ushers. Okay. We're going to ask that they would, we will stand and walk uh, under their direction. Uh, that we walk around. Everyone stand and follow the ushers as they lead you around. Mr. Paul, seeing so many disease. 
apart, but I'm still here. Let us pray. Eternal and Almighty God, our Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and mercy. We thank you now for this offering that has been given. We pray, O oh God, that you bless the givers as well as your servant that shall receive. That it may allow them to continue to you. We are to serve this convention and the body of Christ. We thank you and we love you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Mary Lou, you stay. sessions uh, will continue last day on tomorrow start at 4 p.m. Uh, women's Auxiliary will convene here in the sanctuary. The laymen's will convene in classroom number one. Uh, youth Auxiliary will convene in classroom number three. And the parent body, pastors and ministers uh, will convene in the fellowship hall. Also, uh, if you have not taken care of your registration, please not please sir. Stop by our registration office tonight or tomorrow to be sure that you take care of your registration uh, before the end of our annual session. Uh, we are also asking, uh, again, uh, thank you all so very much for those that apply, that, that complied to what we asked on last night, but again on tomorrow night, it is our president's night. Uh, we want to make sure that our live stream is up and running and that we have good service. So we again ask that those who will, or if you are connected to the house internet please ma'am please sir when you come into the sanctuary for worship disconnect from the house internet as it interrupts our live stream we want to make sure that our president's address uh, gets out to all who will be tuning in uh, amen uh, only essential personnel will be allowed to connect to the house internet 
uh, headed down here, but it's already been announced. Bruno's Auxiliary will have some plates in the back, $500. Amen. Uh, we were back there in the back, it smells pretty good. Pulled pork, uh, green beans, potato salad, mac and cheese, tea, lemonade, drink, and water. Amen. You don't even have to stop at McDonald's. They got you all covered. Amen. So stop by and see them for your plate. Uh, also, on tomorrow, uh, during our President's Processional, uh, we are asking that these particular people be in attendance because you will be a part of the Processional. All conviction staff members, the Second New Hope District, and St. John Missionary Baptist Church family, along with uh, our President's family, uh, will be marching in on tomorrow. So please, now, please, sirs, uh, be here for the President's Processional on tomorrow evening. Also, finally, uh, we're asking that everyone would please now, please, sir, upon dismissal of service, exit the sanctuary as we will sanitize once again to make sure that when you return on tomorrow, you are coming into a clean, sanitized, healthy environment. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer for the president. These are the announcements as they relate to the East Mississippi Baptist State Convention. Twice. We do apologize. One more announcement uh, to all of our preachers and pastors. Please remember, on tomorrow during our president's offering, it has been asked that every preacher and pastor represent with $200. Uh, so please, sirs, do not forget your $200. Ladies, ladies if you want to give $200, we welcome you to come in as well. Amen. But we want to bless our president on tomorrow evening. Let him know how much we love him, how much we appreciate him. But most importantly, how we thank God for him and his leadership that he had guided this convention uh, these past few years, especially during this pandemic. Uh, so please, ma'am, please, sir, come out and support our president, but also come show some love through your monetary gifts. God bless you. And remember, there is hope. At the end of the road. See you tomorrow.